Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys had an amazing Easter with your family or with your friends or by yourself. If you celebrate, God bless. He is risen. I wish you guys the best. I had a phenomenal weekend with my girlfriend actually and her friends, so it was super cool. We'll get into that update later. Yeah, super cool. I have a girlfriend as of like, dude, what? <laughs> like last week. It just happened. That was the craziest thing. I know my channel, I have like talked about in the past, but this one just, just happened. Lost for words. Today we'll be talking about on having better relationships with yourself, your family, and most importantly, a partner. And I guess my two cents on that. I think I learned a lot from having really bad relationships, right, in the past and just being neglected and just not having the best, I don't know, relationships with the person you're supposed to care and be in love with. And I think just taking that time away from the whole dating scene to really bring up the internal trauma and uh, issues that I've had with myself and I guess unresolved issues, yeah. And just bringing that to light and getting therapy and getting me help and just figuring that shit out because I didn't want to run into any relationship, just like friendships too, right? Of uh, Just bringing this trauma and baggage in and have that negatively affecting whatever I do decide to have in my life. And I think the biggest step was realizing that number one, I wasn't ready for a relationship for the longest time and I was deeply hurt. I was super, super deeply hurt and there's a lot of shit happening in the past that I needed to resolve or get a good grip on. I don't think you'll ever be like perfect or fully healed from it, but you get a pretty damn good grasp and with time it becomes very, very minimal. And sometimes you slip into little bouts of, I don't know, I don't say depression, but you know, just that trauma comes back up and you're like, oh no, 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 I got a grip on this. But I think the one thing was my friend asked me, dude, so what happened? Ever since you went to New York your entire life in the past two months, I've just flip-flopped. And it really comes down to really, something really simple. And, and I made a video about it in the past. It's literally self-love. Like I realized everything and every interaction I will have is coming from myself. People serve as a mirror. They serve as a reflection of who I am. So I think I was just kind of tired of treating myself not like a best friend or a homie. Cause I've noticed like with people I genuinely care about, you know, you treat them with kindness, you treat them with respect. You always give them the time of day to hear them out. But then when it comes to myself or to me, I was like, dude, if I was having a bad day, you would just be like, yeah, you deserve that bad day. And I was like, no, 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 no. None of that negative self-talk. You were awesome. Some days you aren't perfect, but you're showing up and you're there, right? So I think having that light bulb to switch in my head really like transformed my life. Um, Cause once you, once you start loving yourself, you start doing things on purpose, right? You, like that you wanna take care of yourself, like hitting the gym, eating healthy, going out and sharing your love. So I guess that's where it stemmed. But I would also say having good relationships kinda come naturally to you. I'd say your, in, your inherent default self is just wants the best for people. But then we get all this like, BS ingrained to us and brainwashed of having like egos or this like power struggle. And I think that's when things get kind of iffy, but having good relationships and being nice to someone actually meaning it is your natural default self. If you have the best intentions coming from self love, because when you're in love, um, you love your friends your family, your girlfriend, spouse, whatever, you genuinely want the best for them. And you just have to keep that in the forefront of your mind of like your actions. Like, okay, sometimes, you know, if you get in an argument, you have to realize like, you love this person, right? So don't let anger consume you. If you allow anger to consume, consume you, you're gonna get in this destructive argument that's going to hurt both of you and have lasting damage. I think this is like Asian parable where it's like, I think a father is teaching his son about anger and his son is having a lot of anger bouts and he would take it out on people. So what he did was he told his son, every time you get angry, grab a nail and a hammer and nail it on this piece of wood. I think it was a fence actually. So I think after a whole year, his son, every time he got angry, he was like just hitting the fence with a nail and just pounding them in. And his dad's like, great job. And his son's like, are you proud of me? I am using my energy in a productive way. But then he said, son, now take out every single nail. And he took every single nail out of the fence. And what was left? Holes. That's what his anger did. And I think that's the greatest metaphor for your life. And I get it. Sometimes when you have a friendship or partner you love or your family, fights do occur, right? But you can have a healthy fight and also realizing and implementing a timeout. Um, I think it's one of the worst reasons and obviously this is where it comes really important to self-control. I still struggle with it. When I start feeling really angry and I realize I'm losing self-control, I'll just do a timeout. Be like, hey, hey, no, no, let's, I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna just get outside, go for like a 30, 
minute walk, whatever extended period of time I need, and let's resume after. Because in the heat of the moment, you'll say things that you don't mean, and it's gonna hurt them, and it's gonna hurt yourself. I've been in moments where like with my ex or my mom or my best friends, I'll say stupid shit, and I'm like, dude, I can't believe I said that. And you can't take words back. People remember, you remember. And it's like in your subconscious, I don't wanna say people hold it against you, but they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Your trust kind of becomes a little violated because you're like, well, I didn't never, like you'll be like, I never expected him or her to say something like that. It, 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 it destroys you from within. So I think that was one of the greatest things is realizing that like every relationship, we're gonna fight. But there's ways to channel that and have a productive conversation where you both remind each other, okay, we both love each other, okay? Let's work on this, let's have this conversation and let's work through this together. And obviously it's way more easier said than done, but you have to realize this is why you're in this relationship, right? You love them. And if you kind of forget that or that feeling is gone, why are you there? You're both optionally choosing to be with each other, choosing to be in that moment with each other. You might as well love each other. And that's obviously this only works with the right person, right? If your partner is on the same page, you can try to teach them or you can just go find someone who's already on the same page, right? It's just kind of easier than like, than working on someone. You know how a lot of people say, oh, I'm working on him or I'm working on her. I think it's just easier to find someone who's really on the same page because that time and effort spent on that person can just be channeled in different ways and have a way more productive relationship. When you're both on the same page, you can just go chapters ahead versus having someone play catch up. And that's a difficult conversation in itself, but that's one. In order to have a great relationship, you need to have the right person who's ready to be there. And I think another thing is like, Love is like playful. Like love is playful. I get it. there are times to be serious with your partner and this, this you know, it makes sense, right? But love is playful. Joke and banner with them, right? Like life is so stressful and serious already. Like remind yourself why you're with them, right? You know, think about when you're like a kid and you're in love with that, you know, girl in the playground, that boy in the playground, you're just joking, you're teasing each other, right? It's the same thing as an adult world. Like that's why, like if you're serious and like all stiff with your partner, um, it's like, what is the point? What is the point, right? This is not a business meeting. You don't have to be business professional. Like be you, have fun, cuss, giggle, dance. Like do the things that make you feel awesome. And I think it's just it's just a great thing. I've noticed it, I do it a lot. You know, just tease each other. That's fucking hilarious. And then like partner teases you back and it's like this little playful, uh, playful banter. And then, you know, even like an argument, sometimes throw some jokes in, kind of like tease each other, healthy teasing, right? Not in a negative way. Um, it kind of like lightens up the mood and being like, hey, everything's okay. <laughs> it's, it's like, that's why I love you. So yeah, just like things like that. And I'd say like, I don't, I know what I did to get a girlfriend, but it just like naturally happened. I think just having great relationships with myself, working on yeah, majorly working it with myself, my family, and just my friends, it just kind of happened. Cause like the same, principles I use to like maintain a good relationship just kind of happened by meeting good people and friends. I think I treat every friendship with respect and love and I really care about the people who care about me. And then eventually um, I met her. So, okay, let's see how we go about it. Okay, so pretty much I live in a new apartment building and I'm a social butterfly and I'm trying to meet new people and friends because I moved to the new city, right? Um, there's this girl who's like sitting down studying and I needed the Wi-Fi password. So I like walked up and was like, hey, how you doing? Like, what's the Wi-Fi password? And then we just like chatted. And then you know, I was like, hey, what are you doing? She was in med school. And then she like lived on the second floor and that's like my best friend, Abby. We're just homies now. And Abby and I just like hung out. It was just like a very like, I wasn't looking for anything. She wasn't looking for anything. We, we were just friends. And then she was like, hey, like I have a friend you should meet. Then I was like, okay, cool. And then you, we went to dinner together and I was like, whoa. This girl is super fucking cool. So I just kept seeing her. Then uh, pretty much things just kind of like went on its own, own natural pace. You know, I mean, it wasn't like, some people would say it was fast, but just like I just rode, it was, it was, it was happening at the right pace. It wasn't, it wasn't fast, it wasn't slow, it was perfect. And um, that's why I haven't really been on this channel because uh, I somehow did it. And I know what I did, I used it. I worked on myself, worked on my self-confidence, like social skills right? All this thing, right? And just this doing the homework, it's every single day. And the funniest thing is I'm not saying I'm done. The work is now just starting. It is now just starting. I think a building attraction is its own easy thing, but maintaining love and a relate, maintaining love and attraction in a long-term relationship, that is difficult, right? And I mean, you both have to be attracted to each other, right? Physically and psychologically and spiritually. I think that's the three levels you need in order to have a successful relationship. Because if you're only physically attracted to that person, 
it's fun for the first month, but then you habituate to their looks and then you take them for granted. Personality, psychologically, like I guess that's more intimate, but it's like if you're not physically attracted to someone but love the personality, I mean, sex is a huge thing in a relationship, so I don't know how that would work. And then I'd say like spiritually, right? Just realize that like uh, you and her are both above your body and ego. And there's this like element to it that you can't really express in words. So it's like when you can bond physically, emotionally, then spiritually, it is something great. And I'm super thankful for it. And it's taking a lot of time and effort, but uh, it has proved well. And it's nice to see my progression on this channel. I can pick up any videos and be like, I was not ready for a girlfriend at that point. I wasn't even ready for a friendship at that point. I wasn't ready for myself at that point. And then you can kind of see how like things have slowly progressed and where I am today. I feel way more confident who I am. And that is the whole point of bedroom talks. And there are a lot of other goals I wanna achieve, but now it's time to build something. Build something that's beneficial to both of us. And I'm just gonna write it out, right? Things happen in life, I can't guarantee anything, but I'm gonna focus on the positives and give it my absolute best and remind myself why I'm in this relationship, why I am fully surrounded by love and I have so much love to give. So, life update my thoughts on having better relationships. And as always, I wish you the best. Namaste.